Welcome to the Police Accountability Podcast. Brought to you by CopBlock.org. CopBlock is a decentralized project supported by a diverse group of individuals united by their shared goals of police accountability, education of individual rights, and the sharing of effective tactics to utilize while filming police. From sunny Phoenix, Arizona, these are your Cop Block headlines for the week of October 31st to November 6, 2010. The family of Aaron Campbell, who was killed in January by a Portland police officer, has filed a wrongful death suit against the police and the city of Portland. According to Oregon Live, the lawsuit alleges that the unarmed victim was attempting to surrender when he got hit by beanbag rounds. When he reached back in pain, officers fatally shot him in the back with an AR-15. Police blame communications and tactical failures at the scene for the incident. A former Baltimore police officer, Gregory Musmaker, has been sentenced to five years in federal prison for violating a teenager's civil rights by beating him in the face with a baton after a 2004 arrest. The AP reports that Musmaker admitted that he struck the 17-year-old and then submitted false police records records to cover the the incident. An unarmed man was shot three times after being tasered twice on a judgment call of acting suspicious. The Twin Rivers, California police officer assigned to school duty noticed the man riding a bicycle outside of the school. The victim's mother, Loretta Lozano, said she wants Twin Rivers School District Police to answer why they shot her 28-year-old son more than once on Thursday. Some neighbors and family told KCRA 3 News that school police have been harassing people outside of the school grounds. One person interviewed stated, They are supposed to be on our side, and now for this to happen right now. This is wrong, and I hope there is some justice going on. Washington, D.C. police officer Scott Fike is the subject of a complaint for an incident that took place at a public festival in September. Eleven witnesses have given statements that directly contradict the police investigation surrounding the incident. Lucky Dog Animal Rescue's sworn statement claimed the officer Fike threw one of their adoptable pet dogs down a flight of stairs and shot it several times amid a crowd at the festival. According to the Washington Examiner, the 11 witnesses state the dog was not aggressive and veterinary records for the deceased animal state the dog was friendly. Some Rialto, California police officers are in a sticky situation after allegations emerged that they had had group sex with strippers while on duty. A drink server at the world-famous Spearmint Rhino sued the city, alleging she had sex with on-duty officers and was also involved in group sex at the Rialto Police Benefit Association's Union Hall. The Contra Costa Times reported that the investigation led to six officers, four were placed on administrative leave. Authorities won't name the officers on leave, citing the investigation. Officer Jordan Silva of Brockton, Rhode Island, was arrested this week for assault with a deadly weapon. The Herald News reports the incident happened after Silva and a friend were told to leave a local bar. Silva became aggravated and allegedly took a black handgun out of his pocket, put a bullet in the chamber, and waved the gun in the direction of the employees. After the incident, Silva returned to a car where he was confronted by Fall River Police. Silva denied he brandished the firearm but was arrested after local police conducted interviews with witnesses. WDFW-TV reports that Officer Matthew Tate of the Dallas, Texas Police Department has been suspended and is under investigation after he fatally shot an unarmed man and unintentionally injured an uninvolved 11-year-old boy. The boy was shot in the arm by one of the stray bullets fired by Officer Tate. Police were reportedly in the apartment complex looking for alleged drug activity. They claimed that the man made threatening movements while refusing to take his hands out of his pockets. However, witnesses are claiming that the officer didn't give the man any commands before shooting. This report is made possible with the help of InjusticeEverywhere.com. For more on these and other shocking stories of cops behaving badly, visit CopBlock.org. This is Zoe. And this is Nick. Stay tuned for a word from our sponsor, and stay here on LRN.FM for more liberty-oriented programming. (laughs) 